Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two of this news bulletin today for Thursday, October 18th, sorry, 2012. Um, my website's ggnonline.com and on YouTube it's ddarko2012, ddarko2013. So, and all the headlines and links will be in YouTube's video description, so please check those out. So we're talking about global corporations and technocrats and billionaires and trillionaires running the world, the real, the real governance, right? The real government. And um, then we came across this next article, Gap pulling the Manifest Destiny t-shirt. So, and they say that they're getting a history lesson. Well, they're pushing the boundaries. That's what it's always about, right? Especially in schools. They try to push the boundaries, you know, RFID trackers in Texas, and they was outraged. So then they pull it back. They're always pushing the envelope here talking about the powers that be so see one of these people said i first learned manifest destiny in american history in the junior high school to me it always meant to one could set their goals and work hard and achieve their dreams right have an opportunity right but it goes on here and it says that uh it actually refers to mid 19th century mindset that white americans have a divine obligation to claim as much of the continent as possible for themselves slaughtering and oppressing native people in the process and of course each other that's my own theory was the civil war half of it was about um well, obviously the south wanting to succeed from the union um as they as they could have right under what the 10th amendment and that a secession but uh the union didn't like that see so they went out and they just started uh, you know bringing war to the south but the thing is is what they expanded during that fight of fighting each other they expanded west along with the railroad and that's how they did that that's how they conquered the entire continent with the help of the civil war and joseph stiglitz says greece and spain are in a depression so it is now official they're in a depression, not a recession, says a Nobel Prize winning economist, Joseph Stiglitz, on Wednesday, blaming tough austerity measures for their downward economic spiral. He said the IMF was a little too optimistic in its forecast last week, and he says I'm more pessimistic than they are about growth. I see significant risk of continuing turmoil. Then you have Greek unemployment rises above 25%. These are supposedly high schoolers that are protesting outside the finance ministry against state funding cuts to municipalities that have disrupted school bus services in Athens. Then you have this uh, term Grexit or Greek exit from the euro could spark global economic crisis, says German think tank. Well, they already got a crisis on their hands. They're called neo-Nazis, and, so, and they're just making the, the situation worse. So, But um, moving on here. We have what? Are neo-Nazis aiding Greek cops with do-it-yourself law enforcement? So forget the day-to-day -day images of riots, protests, the truth on the ground in Greece is far harsher. Just as we warned numerous times, social unrest is escalating rapidly and the extremists are gaining strength and power. One of Greece's neo-Nazi Golden Dawn Party MP says there is already civil war and Greek society is ready, even though no one likes this uh, to have to fight. So while these anti-austerity measures, uh, protests are going on, the Golden Dawn Party are de-arresting demonstrators, pulling them from police detention as the police do nothing. And there's a video clip down there if you want to go check it out. Uh, but it says here, this is what the Golden Dawn says, On one side there will be nationalists like us and Greeks who want our country to be it as it used to be. On the other side, illegal immigrants. I love how they always put the anarchists in there. Anarchists and all those who have destroyed Athens several times. So as Mason concludes, the social and political outcome of the IMF and EU austerity program and the implosion of the mainstream politics in Greece looks like a catastrophe for democracies. That's if they had one, right? Because what we have is representative democracy. You know, if we really had democracy, we'd all have a say when we voted, but we don't. We have a democracy where we're represented by sellouts. A fascist party, is, it was a good trick, man. It's always a good trick. Uh, that they pull on people, setting up these transitional and new governments. A fascist party in full cry, black shirts smashing migrants' homes, swastikas on the streets, and no, this is not Germany in the 30s, this is Greek, Greece 2012. And of course, a lot of this happens because of what? Because of the banks, because of the wars. So, I mean, they, the, the elites knew what they were doing when they did that, when they created an environment for um, someone like uh, an Adolf Hitler to take power. And believe it or not, he actually did it democratically, as they say right, with elections and votes. And, um, you know, there's uh, some people that have uh, done research saying that, you know, both sides, that the West actually funded uh, those, uh, Germany and stuff like that. So, and then there's others that say that, that that's a bunch of baloney, but it's all a business. So, 
and they got what they wanted, which was the United Nations, which was the state of Israel. So, and the far right Golden Dawn uses fascist symbols. Almost a quarter of Greeks under 25 support the party. See, it's sad though, because, you know, it's like, I would love to see a stateless society, like I said, you know, I'd like to see a stateless society. Some people call it anarchy. I don't like that word because it's just been uh, used in brainwashing so much that people think that it means chaos and no laws. Well, my view would be that there would be common law. You couldn't just go and start killing people or stealing their property. They can kill you or defend their property. Um, also, you know, as far as democracy goes, if people didn't want to participate in the system anymore, they want to pay taxes, they didn't want to, they didn't want to participate in that social political system, then they should be able to withdraw and not pay their taxes. Like my mom said, well, then nobody would pay their taxes. And I said, exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's, let's stop kidding ourselves here. If you don't, if, if you're being forced into do it, then you're not free. If you're born into it, you never had a choice and you go through the education system, which conditions you that this is the way it is and it's the best system in the world. And then you grow up and you get to your 30s and you start to, you know, you go through the all the crap. You start having, to start, start having to pay bills. You realize that it's all about interest and you're a debt slave. And you say, well, this system is like everywhere else. And then you want to pull back from that system. Well, you can't. That's why I said you'll get a club over the head. And so as far as the immigration, these people are attacking immigration. That's what it keeps talking about, attacking immigrants' homes and stuff. See, if you, if you do have a government or something like that or a nation state, um, you do have to somewhat have like a certain line in the sand that you draw, right? And so this is happening everywhere. It's happening in the U.K. It's happening in the United States. It's happening in parts of Scandinavia with immigration, and, it, and, it, and it's killing the culture, and they call it multiculturalism and diversity, and people feel like they're being threatened, so this is why they get in this defensive posture. But just like the military and the suicides, instead of addressing the actual problem, the root cause of it, like the mission, they, they want to take their guns away, they want to give nasal spray to, to keep them from killing themselves, you know. Uh, instead of addressing the problem of what led to the rise of the Nazi party and the, and the rise of, of, of nationalists like that, um, they rather do this, ban everything, right? Um, ban everything that uh, pertained to that particular historical period. They've actually done that in Germany. I, I, I've, read, I've heard about that, about how they've rewritten their entire history in, their, in German textbooks, you know? Um, they can't talk about anything. They can't deny anything, nothing. So... Twitter suspends a neo-Nazi account in Germany. It's the first time Twitter has used its new censorship policy, blocked the account of a German neo-Nazi group, uh, prompted by requests from Berlin. So it's always coming out of uh, uh, Germans' own government. The move is the first time Twitter has enacted its local censorship policy, which it rolled out in January. And a woman, 80 years old, has been arrested for removing Obama-Hitler sign. 80-year-old Connecticut woman has been charged with larceny and breach of peace after tearing down political signs that include an image of Barack Obama with the Adolf Hitler style mustache. It's kind of unusual too. This is, uh, you know, from the uh, Lyndon LaRouche, the LaRouchers as they call them. They're pretty hardcore in their mission. Uh, but it's very unusual that you actually see something like this happen. Uh, usually if it's, a, if it's something uh, that's bashing Obama, it would be pulled down, right, immediately. Uh, but this is kind of like coming from the, quote, right or something like we're conser consider conservatives or libertarians, and it's actually staying up, which is interesting. Uh, but, you know, like uh, there was this family that had this cake, and uh, I don't know what it was. It had something to do with a cake, and they were, it was, I guess it was a birthday for their son they called Adolf. And uh, actually, I believe they CPS their kids just for that because they named their kid that. So... Like I said, you know, it's like if you don't know history, you're going to be doomed to repeat it. So <laughs> if you want to look at rewritten history and propaganda, well, then go right ahead. But you're going to go through the same boat again. NDAA, the uh, National Defense Authorization Act, critic stranded in Hawaii after turning up on a no-fly list. So uh, he was en route to a U.S. Navy base in Japan to see his wife when armed military guards informed him that they had other plans. An American citizen with no criminal record has been put on a federal no-fly list, so he's stuck there. So kind of interesting. I haven't floated since 2005, and uh, I'd be surprised if I wasn't on one of those lists. New York Evangelical College probes Obama filmmakers. So, see, you make a film about Obama, boom, this guy's life has been gone down the tubes. So, um, yep, suddenly election 2012 is all about women. This is what I noticed, right? Uh, Wom uh, Romney, Romney, right, tries to close the gap with crucial demographic. So, 
Women have surged to the forefront of the presidential race in the wake of Tuesday's debate. So furiously courting the demographics. So this is from October 18th. And I first noticed that it was about women, uh, women or feminism or something like that uh, uh, when this Crowley uh, was doing the debate, the first female, the second female, I think, to do the debate. So they like pushing that stuff. Uh, but the other one debates real winners, binders full of women. So, of course, this is the big thing, binders full of women. Someone said, binders full of women, really? Women aren't just resumes, they're people like your corporations. So, but uh, women want what? It's abortion, contraception, and equal pay or jobs. So the Obama regime is targeting so-called women's issues, women's rights, as Romney doubles down on an appeal to women on a promise for more and better jobs. The presidential race could turn out on who gets it right. So there you go. So talking about Candy Crowler, an open letter from the National Organization for Women. So they said that they were encouraged last week when the Candy Crowler or whatever expressed her intention to ask the two candidates follow-up questions, but then their optimism turned to outrage when they learned that their role might be limited to doing nothing than facilitating questions. It, uh, they were talking about or comparing it to the woman who hosted the last one and 20 years ago. She said they were assigned to a town hall style debate where she said she was relegated to being the lady holding the microphone. So, so she answered, right? Uh, Crowley skews hard for Obama in disastrous presidential debate. So, and you have what? Obama bounces back, dominates the debate. So they, that, that's how it's supposed to go, I guess. Topless at the lower, feminine activists stage anti-rape protests by burying their breasts. So I, didn't, I don't really understand that. That's how they did it in Brazil, by getting naked and then uh, uh, talking about women's rights and, and getting raped and stuff like that. So they bear themselves again. The group of girls protest against rape by standing topless in front of this uh, statue. Then next, Sandra Bullock and Chelsea Handler strip naked on Chelsea lately. So uh, this is a common thing now. And uh, it's basically a comedy where uh, Sandra Bullock slams Chelsea Handler in the showers. They're both naked saying, you have a responsibility to be a role model to young girls. A deputy sheriff raped an inmate at a courthouse from October 18th. The Maryland sheriff's deputy is being sued for $15 million after raping a prisoner for 30 minutes in a holding cell before taking the woman to court. After the assault, the deputy sheriff took Reeves back to the courtroom for her afternoon court appearance as if nothing had happened. She felt that she had no choice but to comply with the deputy sheriff, whose demand as he was a sheriff in full uniform and she was incarcerated. The sheriff occasionally responded to radio calls only to return to the cell to continue uh, the act, I guess you call it. And he used the cell phone to take a picture of her while she was naked. So this is an interesting point I saw on the comment board. A regular occurrence in a police state. This is what they mean when they come and try to free our women and give them the freedom to be a sexual object and not a human being. So this is the point that I wanted to make about this, pushing the feminism. I was thinking about it uh, the other day. We were just talking about these global elites and that. Um, and then you have to think about Freemasons, right? Most of them are just doing their own thing, right? And they're taught about diversity, and they try to talk about tolerance and diversity, and they try to push those uh, principles onto people. Uh, but the thing is, is that most Masons are white, and they're male. Um, and I don't believe they can even allow f a female Freemasons. Um, also, uh, they don't really take too serious uh, the minority ones. So, I mean, these people don't give a crap about female rights and equality. They will use you, and they will only give you rights uh, so that they can exploit you. And treat you like an object, right? Like a sex object. And what do you have here? The scary shoes of all time. I've seen this. This is, uh, you know, the thing about uh, staying low to the ground is that you're grounded to the earth. You lose your connection with the female energy that comes from the earth. It's like the male energy comes from the sun, which is why I don't wear sunglasses anymore. So the powers that be, they'll let women be prime ministers because they're puppets, right? They, they just do what they're told, just like male, uh, like uh, Sarkozy or an Obama. They don't make any decisions. It's a scientific global dictatorship. So they're hyper-feminizing or hyper-sexualizing women, and they're feminizing men. And every once in a while, you'll see the blowback of that social engineering. 19-year-old woman says she fears using public transportation after an attack on the bus. They're searching for two men that attacked the teenager and beaten repeatedly after she says no one on the bus did anything to stop it. She says she was beaten for eight blocks and the driver never stopped and none of the passengers tried to help. Remember Bill Murray's talking about responsibility and helping others? 
So there's a reason why the powers that be want to attack the family and traditional family values and stuff like that. Uh, they want to deconstruct society, they want to demoralize it, and you'll have no one else to fend for you, protect you. This is GGN. Thank you.